Hi everyone, this is Dr. Deeksha here. So welcome to the second video in the series of A to Z of pathology. Today in this video, I'm going to cover two letters for you because there are not many terms. So B and C. So let's begin. First term is ballooning. Now I'm sure most of you have heard this in terms of hepatocytes and that's where this term has been described classically, ballooning degeneration. Look at these hepatocytes, it looks like they are swollen, right? And the cytoplasm seems to be just coming apart. So this is due to swelling of hepatocytes with increased in pale cytoplasm. It's a very non-specific pattern. It's like cellular swelling. And then over time, this could lead to breakdown of the cytoskeletal proteins, especially CK8 and 18. And then that could give you what we call uh, Mallory Denk body. So it's a pattern of injury seen in hepatocytes. Of course, very classically described with viral hepatitis, acute viral hepatitis. Next is the term blast. Now, uh, one thing I'd like you to remember from the term is remember blast is like blast from the past. So past means old, primitive, right? Past means from the back. So it's very primitive. So all these cells which we call blasts are basically undifferentiated or immature cells. And they have a single nucleus. They have high NC ratio. And now imagine a cell with a very high NC ratio. The nucleus stains blue and the cytoplasm stains pink. But if there is high NC ratio, that means instead of seeing pinkness, we are going to see a lot of blueness. So these cells look very blue, which is why any cell which has um, most of the most of the tumors which have these cells are called small round blue cell tumors because of these cells which look very blue. Now let me name some tumors that you would have heard of in terms of blasts. First, there's a group of tumors that we call blastomas, right? Now remember, not all of them are small round blue cell tumors, but yes, all of them are composed of primitive cells. So neuroblastoma is primitive neural cell. Medulloblastoma arise in the cerebellum, mostly cerebellar uh, precursor cells. Retinoblastoma, primitive retinal cells. Nephroblastoma, which is also called Wilms tumor, arise from these primitive precursor cells that we call nephrogenic rests, which are then capable of differentiating into three kinds of cells like stromal cells, epithelial cells, and then remain completely primitive called blastemal cells, which is why nephroblastoma is said to be a triphasic tumor. Then you have hemangioblastoma as well, again seen in cerebellum. Remember, it's a part of VHL syndrome. Primitive stromal and endothelial cells are seen. These form vascular spaces that do not resemble small round cells. So remember, hemangioblastoma is not a small round cell tumor. But the rest, yes, they have a small round cell tumor component. Then, of course, the next group of tumors in which you see blasts are your acute leukemias. So I'll go through a couple of images and number kind of blasts with you. Look at this photograph. You can see two big cells with high NC ratio. And in these cells, cytoplasm, I'm sure all of you can recognize these very classical rod-like structures, which are called or rods. So these are myeloblasts. Look at these cells, again, big cells, high, I mean, they look big because of the nucleus, high NC ratio, and you have these, look at the nucleus, it looks like it's folded upon itself, it's, it's almost like, you know, how you're uh, making the dough, and you know, how you fold it and knead it like that, so it's, it's these, this kind of folded nuclear appearance or creased appearance is very classical of monoblasts, so this, these cells are monoblasts. Now have a look at this slide. Uh, take a moment and see if you can make out that there are two types of cells here, right? And then tell me, think about what the diagnosis could be for this. So take a moment, take a moment, identify. There are two types of cells. There is one right in the center, which is an or rod. And then the rest of them seem to have that same kind of, same kind of, you know, that folded crease nucleus. So you have a mixture of both myeloblasts and monoblasts here. So this is a kind of acute leukemia called acute myelomonocytic leukemia in FAB classification, also called AMLM4. So uh, for those of you who got it correctly, yay, congratulations. For those who didn't, it's fine. Just go back, have a look at the photographs again, look at the classification. In a similar video, I have covered classification of leukemias. Please have a look at that as well. Next, now look at these cells. You can see, again, a high NC ratio of a moderate cytoplasm, but the cytoplasm of these cells seem to have some vacuoles. And these vacuoles are looking empty because they're actually glycogen containing, and you know we don't get stain there. So these are erythroblasts. So this is probably a case of AMLM6. Now look at these cells. 
can you make out very dark nucleus high mc ratio and then it seems like the cytoplasm is trying to bud out right so these are primitive megakaryocytes so these are megakaryoblasts and you know why they're trying to bud out because they want to make platelets they just don't realize they're not old enough to do that yet you know how children make mistakes so that's what they're doing in an attempt to bud off and make platelets you get blebbing but then ultimately nothing forms so these are megakaryoblasts now look at these cells you can barely see any cytoplasm there's no previous finding that you know we'd seen before high nc ratio no ore rods barely any cytoplasm no granules no vacuoles no budding these are this is a classical picture of lymphoblasts now please remember it's not always possible to look at the cells and tell whether they are t or b lymphoblasts but this is only for the postgraduates to remember that the certain kind of t ALs who tend to have which tend to have a little bit of indentation and cleaving so even though of course we need uh, to confirm whether it's b or t phenotype but even on a little bit on morphological picture sometimes if you see a little bit of cleaving and indentation in the nucleus likely to be more in favor of t a l l next term basophilic so this is uh, like the previous uh, video where i viewed it acidophilic or um, eosinophilic so this is the opposite of that basophilic so baso means basic and uh, phil means loving so anything that loves basic dyes which means it itself is an anionic or acidic in nature hematoxylin dye and as we know the nucleus has a lot of acidic uh, stuff like uh, dna rna that's why you get a very blue nucleus in routine staining and Basophil is the name of the cell which stains very blue. Basophilic cytoplasm is a term we are used when the cytoplasm looks a little blue. And basophilia, the term could mean that the number of basophils in the peripheral smear have gone up, or that there is more blueness. You know how sometimes we can mention there is increased uh, eosinophilic, um, there is increased cytoplasmic eosinophilia. That means the cell is more pink than usual or there is decreased basophilia. That means the cell is less blue than usual. So remember the term and then in the context you need to derive the meaning from it. Now look at this cell. I'm sure this is one of the most easily recognizable cells. Look at that. So blue, so many granules that I can barely make out where the nucleus is, right? So this cell is usually not even seen in a routine peripheral smear. Go back to your CBC reports and you'll see that basophil has 0 to 1. And when we see one, we get very really happy. Oh, no, we have, we're getting a basophil. And then you get more and you get worried because I'm sure all of you remember that increased basophil count in the presence of an increased total leukocyte count in an elderly patient would probably prompt you to think of the diagnosis of CML, chronic myeloid leukemia. Very good. Next. Now, the next term is bulla. So you can see the meaning of bulla right in front of you. Bulla basically means bubbles. So this term can be used to describe grossly a couple of things. For example, the vesicular bullous disorders in skin, which are the blistering disorders. Bullet that you get in lung, so bullous emphysema. And then, of course, go back to anatomy. In ENT also, you describe a lot of bullet, right? So that's the meaning of the term bulla. Next, let's move on to the next alphabet, C. So first, we're going to talk about cribriform. Look at the term cribriform. Form means formation or type. And cribri basically means sieve-like. It's Latin for sieve-like. So the terms where we use this uh, phrase cribriform is cribriform plate, cribriform DCIS, and cribriform adenocarcinoma. And in each one of them, you're going to see lots of empty, empty spaces like a sieve. So this is a cribriform plate. This is a DCIS, an intraductal carcinoma, which has lots of cribriform. You can make out those sieve-like spaces in between, right? And with the duct is full of cells. They are not infiltrating, so it's a DCIS, but the pattern is going to be called cribriform DCIS. This is a biopsy from a tongue mass, and you can see the mucosa on the top, but in below that, in the submucosal area you can see infiltrating you know cribriform glandular appearance so this is a cribriform adenocarcinoma this is a biopsy from prostate now this is for the postgraduates you guys can see again a cribriform pattern mixed with a lot of solid pattern so this is this would correspond to gleason score four and uh, it's very uh, gleason's grade four and then of course you assess and then give it a complete score and then give it a modified grade group as well so this is how cribriform uh, terminology is used to describe 
this morphology. Next, chromia or chromic. Again, I'm sure this is very simple. Basically means color. So you have heterochromia, which means different colors in both eyes. Hyperchromasia. It's a term that we use very classically in in you know malignancy. So hyper means more. Hemochromatosis. Blood color is more. So why is blood color more? Because of increased iron. Normochromic or hypochromic RBCs. Normal means normal. Hyper means less. So microcytic hypochromic RBCs, as I'm sure all of you know. Next, caseating. So the term caseating basically means cheese-like. So remember, this term is used on gross, and of course, it's mostly accompanied by granulomatous inflammation as well. So remember the cheese-like appearance. See that? I dare you to have pizza after this. So have have you know you can make that cheese-like appearance. And this is a gross picture of a lung with caseous necrosis. So this is again a little bit for the postgraduates. Um, if sometimes you can get very you know solid appearing areas, but depending on how much the organ is, has been fixed, you can try next time you're grossing your specimen to maybe scoop a little out, and you'll see that crumbling cheese in your hand. And remember that when you see microscopy, you will uh, see just necrotic pink material, uh, you know, granular pink material. There'll be nothing else there on microscopy, no cells. So this is caseous necrosis. Next is comedo. So the term comedo basically has been derived in different ways. Or you can remember it as to eat up and get too full and blocked. So this term is used when you get plugging of a ductal structure with a lot of necrotic material. In dermatopathology, we use this to describe blackheads, whiteheads, pimples, depending on you know the appearance. And of course, another DCIS pattern has been called comedo. So have a look at this photo now. You remember the previous photo we saw for cribriform? The ducts are full of cells, but there there were holes. And here you can see pink, pink material right in the center, which is all necrosed material. The ducts seem like they are blocked. And in, uh, sometimes you can even get calcification, dystrophic calcification of this, which is one of the ways that radiologists can pick up a DCIS. And again, for the postgraduates, next time you are grossing a specimen of breast carcinoma, wherever you see the tumor around it, try and squeeze the specimen a little between your two thumbs. You might be able to um, express a little bit of necrotic material. It comes out like, you know, how toothpaste comes out of the tube. So that will tell you that surrounding the infiltrating ductal carcinoma or infiltrating tumor that you have, there is, there is DCIS as well. It's a gross finding as well, that necrosis. Now, uh, this was two more letters and please subscribe, like and share. Let me know what, you th what you're thinking of these series and stay tuned, of course, for more alphabets. All the very best to all of you.